Thank you, Father, for who you are and what you do. God, such an awesome privilege to walk with you. God, such an awesome privilege that you have dreamt about us and that we are here on earth with a purpose. And by your grace, Lord, thank you that we are able and have the capacity to accept your assignment for our lives. Help us to understand that. And thank you, Father, that as we accept your assignment for our lives, we can have a blueprint and by your grace understand how to believe your blueprint. Teach us then how to go further with you, Lord, and to build a life with your word as the foundation. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. As all say, amen, amen, let it be so. Great, my brother, my sister, what you can write down then is number three. Commit to communicate. Please get the previous teachings. It will be on the our Father's Home channel. And uh, we normally send it out also to those who are on the group, WhatsApp group. But work through this. And uh, I believe this is for the season that the church are going into more and more the nations that will be shaken and the church that will rise through wise builders, wise virgins, wise virgins that will understand how to be in his presence, get the extra oil, wise builders that will understand how to build on the foundation of who Christ is. Amen. Everybody say, commit to communicate. When you've accepted your assignment with Christ as the king over your life, because you respect him and know God has a calling on your life, you are not, after you gave your life to Christ, you didn't die and go to heaven. You are here with a purpose. You are here because you are on, on assignment by God. As the Father sent the Son, so Jesus said, so I send you. You are not from this world. You are in this world, but not from this world. So we say, if you accepted your assignment, praise God, you have a blueprint. Everything will fall. Everything will be shaken and fall except one thing, the word of God. That's your blueprint. That what is unshakable, totally unshakable in heaven and on earth. That blueprint you have in your hand, you have in your heart, you have in your mind when you study your blueprint. Amen. Now, when you've done that, you will find thousands and thousands of things we're supposed to do, that we should do. And you will find thousands of things that you must not do or shouldn't do. Now, then in that place, if I cannot come into the place of knowing, God, what do you have for me today? It can drive you crazy. You will only in every day see, oh, I was supposed to do this. Well, I must still do this, or I must still do that. And the blueprint can cause a lot of stress. The Bible can cause a lot of stress and performance and anxiety in you if you don't handle it with the Spirit of God. Hello? Then you go into performance. And all this stuff that you must do right. And What is God's will for me then for today? But when you build this foundation for your life, then very uniquely, when you learn how to communicate with God, God will speak to you about what is the thing that you and Him, that you are going to do together with Him tomorrow. What you're going to do for Him, what you're going to do with Him. Through His Spirit, He will reveal it to you. We see the first scripture, John 6, 28. They said therefore to Him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Let's say, I need to work the works of God. Let's say, work the works of God. So you can work for God in a context of where work is a gift from God, or like we said, work is slavery, work is a curse. Work yourself into death, or work as an honor, as a worship unto the Lord. But when I work the works of God, that means, like we said in the previous session, that God prepared for himself certain works to do. And he has prepared for you and me certain works to do long before today. But when you work with him, 
He's like, you will work his works. God has some works to do tomorrow, and I'm going to do it with him. So how will I work the works of God? That when I work, people recognize it. That is the work of God. When you do business, people recognize it. That is the work of God. When you teach, that was God speaking. When you relate, when you pray, that was God through that man speaking. May that be the testimony of your life. Because in the good works God has prepared for you in advance, as a workmanship, as a masterpiece in his hand, that is what must shine forth through that what you do. It is a worship unto the Lord. And it's a worship unto the Lord when you can recognize God in it and people around you can recognize God in what you do. Amen. That is what you call success in your work. That when things are going tough and it's rough and it's a lot of things that must happen and supposed to happen and you don't see the breakthrough, but you are faithful that in spite of what's happening, you will honor him. In spite of what's happening, you will put your heart with God and you will have a driving force and that is the love of God. You will have a peace that will guide you and protect you. You will have a joy that will be your strength. That is a successful man. Successful in the works of God. You are still here. So when I need to commit to communicate with God, unfortunately, we communicate to him. And then, yes, communication has a lot to do with prayer. And in the prayer, unfortunately, it's many times a petition is something I ask for him to do. Instead of show me what I must do, what you ask of me to do. Where prayer is this worship, where prayer is this petition, where prayer is this standing before him, where prayer is the surrendering unto him, where prayer is, yes, make your request known before the Lord, where prayer is intercession, where prayer is declaration. Let's go on for another 20 hours about prayer. But just focus today on commit to communicate. Unfortunately, when, when I pray and God, we don't say it like that, and God does not answer my prayer, that's nonsense. God will never not answer. Is that English? Never not answer. Richard Rosier. Okay. God will always answer. But so many times we don't hear his answer. So many times the answer does not make sense. Like we always say, when you ask God, can I have ice cream or malfa pudding? And you hear, eat your meat. Oh, what is the devil saying? I'm talking about ice cream or malfa puri. You know, what other thoughts are coming in here? That's not from the Lord. Stay focused in your prayer. God answered, <laughs> but he answered like a father. He answered his son. So honor God that you don't tell him in what, what is the agenda point and he must stay to the point and answer according to the point. We will never say that, but that's unfortunately how we sometimes do in our how far we commit in our communication. If I don't hear an answer according to my question, so many times in the past, never again, I stand back in prayer. I feel discouraged because I don't get an answer. I pray for this and I pray for this and I pray for this and it does not happen. I pray for that and I pray for that and God doesn't say left or right because he's not going to say left or right. He's going to talk about something else. Now that's a word you can write down, progressive communication. Like the word worship. The word worship in the Greek means progressive intimacy. Pros kinewa, the Greek word pros to kiss, kinewa to come closer. Other way around also. May God help you, may God help me. Hello, are you with me? Progressive intimacy, that's worship. So the same in your communication. Progressive intimacy. You're going to learn how to communicate. Is it not like from a baby? You need to learn how to communicate. You're going to learn a language. The language with God is the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, you have no language. You don't know how to communicate with God. So you better get into the blueprint. That was point two, hey? Believe your blueprint, see, commit to communicate. Only if you believe your blueprint and can believe what God would say. Because many times God would say something that is 
unbelievable, something that doesn't make sense, something that is unlogical. And then you're going to cut out the conversation with God and not be committed anymore because you don't understand what he's saying, because he does not answer according to your question. Please, guys, may God help us. Progressive. Progressive, committed communication you need, and I challenge you with this morning, with God. It can bring a radical change in you. It can change your total, totally your perspective, your destiny, the impact that you have through your lifestyle. We see in John 4, the woman at the well and Jesus speaking. Jesus asked for a drink, something to drink, and the woman does not understand why he would ask her because of who she does not understand who he is and she does not understand who she is in what how God sees her you don't understand how God sees you you will not many times understand his communication with you you don't understand who he is and then you'll not understand what he's saying. So she didn't understand. Let's go to that scripture. If you knew, Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And he would have given you living water. So many times. In our commitment, in our conversation with God, my brother, my sister, God wants to reveal himself for who he is. You ask for certain provision, but God manifests himself as the way, the truth, and the life. What is that? God wants to talk to you about strategy. You ask for provision, God manifests himself as the bread of life. Yes, he's going to give you provision. God manifests himself as the good shepherd. He's going to talk about he wants to guide you, he wants to protect you, he wants to lead you, and he will... Let you lay down in his provision, green pastures. He will command goodness and mercy to follow you. That You don't pray for that. You pray that you accurately follow the shepherd. And God will be faithful and goodness and mercy will follow you. But in your commitment, is it true that God must perform in a certain way for you to stay committed in prayer? For you to stay committed in your communication? with him. That's arrogance. May God help us. Amen. Jesus asked the woman for the water. She was totally confused, but she stayed in this progressive communication. You know the story. We're not going to go into that. And as she stayed in this communication with God, she realized, okay, I see you're a prophet because you nailed me on my sin. No. Sometimes God will reveal, even through brothers and sisters, through the words and things to you, then you can go, just walk away in condemnation. You had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. Jesus said to her, oh, Jesus was there just to expose us and just to nail her. No. He wanted to heal her. He wanted to set her free. And if we would hear something like that, and things are exposed in our lives, and, and sin and, and, and rubbish, you can walk away out of the conversation with the, the other spirit that communicating to you, that demon of condemnation, that demon of rejection, that demon of shame. You can walk away or you can decide, I will stay in my commitment with you, Lord, to communicate. I see that you're a prophet because you can see my rubbish. But then go further, go further. And then at the end of the day, she received this beautiful, beautiful, awesome revelation of worship and of living water. And then through her life, there was this amazing impact. All the Sumerians came to Christ. This lady that's not qualified and what that is not qualifying and that actually Jesus is saying, you don't qualify. Because he's exposed the lifestyle. But keep in that conversation. Keep yourself in the communication with God. 
And as she stayed there and she asked and she asked and she saw and she saw more of, more of him. I can see you are the Messiah. So many, so many thousands of Jews could not see the Messiah. But this lady, this lady that does not qualify to see him as the Messiah, she saw the Messiah because she stayed in that communication. And in that conversation, oh men, are you still here? You come with your agenda, but please keep on speaking to God because he's going to unfortunately put his agenda on the table. So when we say, I will stay in commitment to speak to God, I can ask him, but I can keep on asking him the same thing. The next scripture, 11, Luke 11, 9. So I say to you, ask and keep on asking and it shall be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. What does that mean? You must keep on asking. What are you? The same question, ask, ask. No, that's nagging. You can even call it a tantrum. God didn't say throw a tantrum. God didn't say manifest and get an attitude and just go, please, Lord, please, Lord, please. Progressive communication. Ask and keep on asking. And you ask God, say something. What do you mean with that, what you are saying, Lord? Not, that is not, I'm asking that. What are you saying about that? And then, when you say that, not so that I can stand, understand everything, but that I would understand what I need to do. And I understand his heart in what he asked me to do. Keep on asking has to do with a progressive, progressive conversation. A progressive conversation where, where we discuss it. I want to say it has to do with a commitment to, to keep on discussing the situation. Are you with me? Not asking the same thing the whole time. That's tantrum and nagging. Because if you keep on asking, you will learn more. You will come into a conversation. God says, come into this conversation with me. But stay in the conversation. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Because I'm going to hide myself from you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, In certain ways, yes. Because it's not cheap. It's not cheap love. You're going to grow into this love relationship. Seek, not just his will, seek him. Seek him. Amen. So, when you are standing before God for certain breakthroughs, certain answers, in the Old Testament, a lot of examples about that. God says, when you seek me, not when you seek the answer, you will find me. Not when you seek the answer, you will find the answer. When you seek me, You will find the answer. Communication, this conversation where he wants to come and sit with you. Do that as a lifestyle. Amen. Keep on seeking because you don't know everything. Don't think you know a lot. The more, many, many people had that testimony. The more you know him, the more you realize you know nothing. The more you come to know God, the more you realize you actually know nothing. Because you see more and more and more of his greatness. You are still here? Knock and keep on knocking. Because in that knocking, a door will be opened. A door will be opened. The door of the sheep. Jesus Christ. So understand where to stand and to knock. Because he will also be knocking. But he will organize a door between you and him. Because he wants you to invite him in, like Revelation 3.20. See, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, not if you hear my knock, if you hear my voice and you recognize my voice, how can you recognize his voice? Because you believe your blueprint, because you studied the blueprint, because you know the word, you know the language of the one that is speaking on the other side of the door. Don't just open a door and say, God, if this door opened, I know it's you. Wow, that's a cop-out for communication. That's where I, 
don't have that commitment to come in conversation where I ask and keep on asking. But when the asking becomes a nagging, I get discouraged. But when my prayer life is in conversation, I will get more excited because me and God, we are speaking together. If I knock, you open, you off because you heard my voice. I will come in, I will dine with you. I will commune with you. There will be communion. There will be conversation. But sometimes you will knock. God will expect you to knock and you don't realize you're knocking at the door of the office and you're going to go in and God just going to say, like that boss not even going to say good morning. I'm going to say, I want you to do this and this and this and this and this. He's going to look away. It's finished. You're supposed to leave and go and do it immediately because it needs to be done immediately. And sometimes God will reveal himself, not just as king of kings and you are the servant and Go and do. Sometimes as the shepherd, sometimes as the one, the best friend that wants to sit with you and just share his heart and you are in a hurry. And where you must sit in the, at the feet, but you are in the kitchen and you're getting irritated with Mary and irritated with Jesus. Don't you care that she's not helping me in the kitchen? But it was the time when God wants to reveal himself as best friend, as bridegroom to the bride. But come to know who he is. Like this lady had to discover who is this man that does something that is not supposed to happen. Asking me, as a Samaritan, for a drink. And she got the revelation in the New Testament about worship. This lady. Hallelujah. You are still with me. Communication through prayer and relationship will bless my life. I, they will be blessing on my life. It will keep me alive. It will keep me fresh. But it will lead me to discover with excitement certain pointers for the good works God has prepared for me. Oh, God will just show me the good works that I must do. God will give me strategy as you understand a lifestyle of communicating with him. Deep calling out to deep. The depth of the richness of who he is to the depth of the quality of who you are. In your spirit. When that quality in you meets the quality of who he is. That you call eternal life. Knowing God. John 17, 3. Amen. But you need to hear. When you are in prayer. When you are in conversation. You need to hear what is hidden. Let's say I need to hear what is hidden. For many things that you don't know yet. My brother, my sister, you stay in conversation and you stay in worship before him. Humility will protect you. When you get revelation, when you understand strategy, you don't submit to strategy. You don't become intimate with the strategy. No, you, you stay because of humility. You stay with God. Amen. Because Jeremiah 33, 3, they call it the telephone number. 333. Hey, call to me and I will answer you. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things fenced in and hidden, which you do not know. Do not distinguish or recognize or have knowledge of and understand. But if you don't realize, there's a lot of things that you don't know about tomorrow. There's a lot, if you think you have everything under control, you're not, call, you're not going to call any. And you're not going to hear his voice in his answer. You're not going to be shown great and mighty things of what God's going to do this week. Because the root problem is, you think you have it under control. But there's things hidden about this week. There's things fenced in. And God wants you to weigh, not the devil, he put a fence around it. He kept it hidden. Because it's not about the goodies. It's about God. Hello. He died for a relationship. He didn't die just to bless you. No, not at all. But the blessing is in the relationship. Are you with me? Commit to communicate. Because communicate is part of the worship. It's, it's that amazing honor. It was the desire of God to have a relationship with somebody that you will call man, woman. He will call him sons, daughters. He will call them bride. And he will call him bridegroom. 
He will call them servants. He will call himself king. He will call himself father. And he will call you sons of God. Because of what? He desires this conversation, this communication as worship in a relationship with you. As eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. God's going to communicate from this place of relationship. Listen. You need to listen. You need to answer. You need to obey. You need to do. You need to make choices according to what he is saying. Not according to your agenda. Waiting for him to answer according to your agenda. According to what you think you're supposed to hear. (coughs) Expect not the answer. Expect God. And God will always answer. Isaiah 66 verse 4. Second half. Because when I called, now we just read the scripture where God says, you must call unto me, I will answer. And I will show you things that's hidden. So you didn't even ask for that hidden things because you don't know what's hidden. Things you didn't know even about. He will not just answer your prayer. He will show you things that you didn't even ask him for to know. Things that are, were hidden. But now he turns it around. He says, why is a lot of shaking, a lot of rubbish going to happen? Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not listen or obey. But they did what was evil in my sight and chose that in which I did not delight. My brother, my sister, that could be just plain dead works. I'm not talking about you are committing adultery, you are stealing, you are, you are beating up somebody or I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a lot of things that you think it's okay to do, but it's not giving God joy. It's not bringing him a delight. He wants to be satisfied with you in what you do. That delight in which I did not delight, in which I don't find satisfaction. When you do the works of God, how must we work the works of God? In a place where God himself is not just giving you a, yes, you've done my will. No, he's excited about what you've done and how you've did it with him. There's satisfaction in his heart. Because you didn't do his good, well, but his pleasing and his perfect will. Romans 12 verse 2. Where's the problem? When I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not listen or obey. Why? Why? You did what was evil in my sight. Now you must go to the back of the verse. Okay. Because I do what is good in my sight and do what brings me delight. I'm not talking about a lot of rubbish and a lot of lust and a lot of rubbish. I'm talking about it brings me delight tomorrow to do certain things. I feel satisfied. I feel fulfilled. But how do you know that is what is bringing him fulfillment? Just the previous verse, there's a lot of things hidden. And if you don't realize that, and if you don't understand, there's so much more of the quality and the depth of life that God wants to release to you, show you, man. Come on. Commit in communication, not for answer for your prayer. Commit in communication with God because you are not afraid of a relationship with God. But many times they cannot accept, people cannot accept, they cannot come close to God, cannot come close to this walk. They feel uncomfortable. Now they have all these issues with the Christians and with religion. But at the end of the day, they actually are scared of intimacy, feel uncomfortable about intimacy. You're supposed to go and show them there's no fear in God's love for you. God believes in you. God has a love for you. God desires you. He's waiting for you. He wants to walk with you. He has an appointment with you here. Not only then, because then it's too late. When I called, you didn't answer. When I spoke, you did not listen and obey. Position yourself. Position yourself. 
so that you understand the call of God. Because he is so faithful to call you. He's so faithful to communicate to you that if you ignore him, if you disrespect him, if you don't recognize his voice, if you're not interested in hearing his voice, but he's still there, he will use other people. He will use circumstances. He will use nature. He will use the failures. He will use the success. He will use whatever means because he's so committed to share his heart with you. You are still here? May we understand his passion for this conversation in relationship with you. Shame, guilt, condemnation can silence the voice in the relationship. How many times people feeling ashamed about things, they become silent. You, you, you know that. They sit in self-condemnation about things, what they've done, become silent. No, through the blood of Christ, through the, everybody say, through the blood of Christ. In the name of Jesus, the guidance of the Spirit. Speak to God. Speak to God. Amen. We have Hosea 14, 2 and 3. Take words with you. Take words with you. What is the words? Cheap words, no. And return to the Lord. Say to him. This prophet is saying what you're supposed to say. This is what you're supposed to say. Take away all iniquity, Lord. Receive us graciously, only through the blood. For we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. What is the sacrifices of our lips? That is, I have this, I own my words. I own my mouth. I own the utterance that comes from me. I will sacrifice that I will not just say what I want. I will not just throw a tantrum the way I want. Oh, I'm just sharing my heart with God. But you're actually throwing a ridiculous tantrum with no respect for God with who you are in conversation. There's some psychology in that, yes. But you share it at the cross. This thing that I experienced, that thing, that guy that did this, and this guy that did that, and this, and even unforgiveness and bitterness and issues and frustration and... He says, put everything in the hands of God. But where at the cross of Christ? Were you supposed to be crucified with Christ? Anxiety crucified with Christ. Fears crucified with Christ. Condemnation crucified with Christ. And you make sure you stay there to say, you are dead. You deserve. You deserve one thing and that is death. Because the curse is on you. On who? On the anxiety, on the fear. Not on you. You are blessed all with all the blessings in Christ Jesus. But don't bring that curse close to you. The curse of unforgiveness. The curse of those fears. The curse of that lust and compromise and double-heartedness, double-minded. Don't. Why must you curse yourself? If you are blessed with all the blessings on earth and in heaven. Oh, just smack your neighbor with a holy smack. Okay. Nor will we say any more to the work of our hands. You are our gods. Can you believe it? A few places in the word that it says. You cannot say to the work of your hands, you are our gods. And he's not talking about how they made idols with their hands. But to the work of your hands, your, your job, your business, there where you are involved with how you will never say, you are my God. No man. But when you put your focus there and your stress or your peace depends on how it's going at work. Your security in your work. Your provision is based on your work at the end of the month, the salary. That what you do, you so focus on what you do, you are worshipping the work. Instead of worshipping your God. Don't say anymore. Don't say anymore. What does that mean? You're just speaking, speaking, speaking about the circumstance. Just speaking, speaking about what you're doing and what you're supposed to do. And No. First speak the work of God. What God has done for you. Because that brings you to a place where you will understand. What God has done for me is so excellent. And excellence is living in me. The absolute success of heaven and earth. 
into hell, that hell understand it after the death of Christ. From heaven, on earth, and even into hell, shaken to the core. The success of that of heaven and earth, even into hell, is living in me. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you can boast about his work and stand in awe of his work, through what you see in his blueprint. Wow, 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 wow. And when you read his word, you don't hear condemnation. You you say wow and wow and wow when you read his word under the guidance of the Spirit. Then you will have this desire to communicate because you come to know this language with him because it's not a cheap language. There's death in every word when you get into the word of God. That's death in every sentence that God will speak to you in communication, in your conversation with him. Amen. Are you still here? Oh, say something, please. Amen. Okay. Thank you. I want to give you the last one. God will many times not explain, <laughs> on purpose, not explain what I expect of you to do with the good works that he has prepared for you. Because he is so blessed, he is so fulfilled when you must do it by faith. The righteous will walk by faith. God is pleased by faith. You will overcome the world by faith. Faith as a gift from God, as a product from the word of God. He loves it here on earth, because in heaven you will never, ever, ever, ever for eternity have to respond in faith, because there you see everything perfectly Face to face. But here on earth, you have a way to honor him, a way to work for him, a way to please him, a way to worship him that you will never have in heaven. And that is how you must do it by faith. That in spite of my experience, in spite of my emotions, in spite of the intimidation, in spite of the challenges, still I will do the works that you have prepared for me to do. I will stay in this Commitment to communicate. Amen. Let's say quality conversation in progressive communicating with my master. God, come and do it. Please, Lord, help us to understand how to honor you and not do because we feel in control. Not do because we understand what you ask us to do. But so many times you're going to challenge us, Lord, to do things that we don't understand because you desire us to do it with you. You desire a humility to protect our choices. You desire a dependency on you. As we know, it cannot be from ourselves. We thank you for that privilege, that you open it up, that through your spirit, there can be communication, there can be conversation, as part of our lifestyle with you, Lord, that you want to make it simple, that you want to make it beautiful and simple for us through your spirit. I pray that there will be openness in every heart with every man reborn, their reborn spirit that is so sensitive to your spirit. Come and testify in our spirit, Holy Spirit, not just identity, not just destiny, but our daily destiny with Christ in the good works that he has prepared for us. We ask that in Jesus' name as all say, amen. Amen.